Hi, I'm Dr. Chabot, and this is University Physics One at RIT in the summer of 2020. So welcome to the course. I am making this start of the semester video just to have some introduction to what to expect from the course, how things will work, um, and kind of give you a walkthrough of the main features of my courses that you'll be interacting with in order to be able to keep up with all the assignments. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And after watching this video, if you have any questions, definitely reach out. So hopefully one thing that you'll get to know about me is that I love questions. I'm here to help you um, and that you should definitely feel very comfortable really asking me any questions that you have. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen. So I have some slides that I usually show in an in-person class at the beginning of a semester just to introduce the course. Um, and it's really no different when we're in this online environment. We can still, you know, see and understand those basics even through this video. Um, this is new for me. This is my first fully online course. Um, and given the world crisis that's going on, I think that's true for a lot of professors. So your feedback's always gonna be welcome as we go through this course, um, things that are working and things that aren't, et cetera. All right, so um, like I said, this is University Physics One, um, and my name is Dr. Chabot. Um, and so I, one thing I like to talk about is just what is University Physics One? Well, obviously it's the first semester of physics, um, but what does that mean? Well, historically speaking, what that means is that we're going to be talking about the very fundamental building blocks of physics. Um, basically the 1700s. So what we do in this class is to learn those fundamental laws um, that everything else is built upon. And hopefully what I'll expose you to throughout this semester is letting you see how what we have now in terms of our modern physics and all these cool technologies are really built on these building blocks that we learn in this class. Um, so we really are in the 1700s. UP2, electricity and magnetism and optics, that's really the 1800s. 1900s and beyond, that's what we call modern physics. They might need to come up with a new name um, for it at some point, but for now we still call Einstein basically and later modern physics. Um, so these are the really foundations, motion, oscillations and waves. Um, so what we'll learn in this class, I like to use this quote from Einstein, um, and it says the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it is comprehensible. And that's really what we're doing in this class, is that we're learning those fundamental laws, those things that this, this amazing feat of science has figured out, right? The idea of observations, we're just seeing, you know, the rules of the game play out. We're figuring out those rules as scientists using the scientific method. It's really amazing everything that we have learned and, has, and have accomplished. But what I like to keep separate is what's different between what we'll learn in this class and what a physicist does, right? So, what a physicist does is not just sit there and throw baseballs across a field and keep measuring over and over and over where they land. Instead, right, we already understand certain fundamental laws. We're exploring the stuff we don't know. And it's so cool because there's so much that we don't know. So there's so much that we do know and there's so much that we don't know. And physicists use the fundamental laws and explore the unknown. So another quote from Einstein, which is not contradictory, but instead complementary to the previous one. We still do not know one thousandth of one percent of what nature has revealed to us. So that's the separate separation between what we're going to learn in this class, these fundamental building blocks, and then this larger field of physics that hopefully I'll also expose you to so that it builds that motivation and that interest. Um, all right, so you're going to be seeing a lot of me, um, hopefully, uh, through the videos, but also through Zoom. I use Zoom for office hours um, and uh, for meetings. So um, emails and discussion boards are also a way. So the more familiar that you become with me, hopefully I get to know you. Um, so let me talk a little bit about myself. Um, 
I am what they call an experimental condensed matter physicist. Um, really, that just means materials physics. Um, I did a lot with magnetism. Um, I've gone to and been at a bunch of universities. So I actually attended my undergraduate university at Rice University, um, which is in Houston, Texas. Um, and then I went to graduate school and earned my master's and my PhD in physics. University of Texas at Austin, Austin. Um, they're uh, the Longhorns, so this is their symbol, hook them horns. Uh, and then I did a postdoc, which is something that after you get a PhD, you go do what's called a postdoc, a postdoctorate. Um, and you just go do research for a couple years only. Um, and you really hone your research school skills. I did mine at the National Institute of Standards and Technology in Boulder, Colorado. Then I went on to become a faculty member. So I've always loved teaching. I still love teaching. I've been teaching as a faculty member in physics departments for over 15 years. I started off at the University of San Diego um, in California. I moved on to the University of South Florida um, in Tampa, Florida, which is not actually in South Florida. So that was confusing. Um, and then for uh, family reasons, uh, my uh, uh, extended family is up in this area. I have wanted to come to Rochester. And so now I'm here for good. Um, I'm very happily at RIT. And I've been here for um, about five to six years. Um, so materials physics, like I said, I did a lot with magnetism. Um, I made these tiny little cantilevers. I'd go into the clean room, the same place where they make all of the, you know, single crystal silicon, uh, you know, microprocessors and all of that MEMS um, stuff. And I'd get into the bunny suit, go into the clean room, and I'd make these really tiny little oscillators. Um, and basically, these are, you know, image, these are actual, on the right hand side, these are actual images um, of them from uh, the SEM. And on the left, these are models that I've done using finite element modeling. Um, but the length of one of these here um, is just about 200 microns. Um, which is just about the diameter, it's on the order of the diameter of one piece of hair. And the thickness of each one of these is 100 nanometers. So really tiny, floppy, twisty things. And what's so cool about that, and one of the reasons I love teaching you P1, is because these tiny, floppy, twisty things, they're useful because they measure very small torques and forces. And so tiny little torques and tiny little forces, common terms that we're gonna use all through the semester, show up constantly in the purpose of my research. You can measure very tiny torques and forces, then you could study very small things like micromagnets, or we even did force detection of nuclear magnetic resonance really large amounts of applications for these really sensitive detectors. Um, also, you'll see in this course, we do do oscillations and waves and you know the, the fundamentals of oscillations that we learn in this course apply to all of this stuff that I used in my own research. So besides that, as my field of research. Um, my current interests lie in education, actually. I do a lot with physics education research um, with a focus on the introductory courses. So student feedback is huge, especially in this new online environment for me. So please definitely give me feedback as you have it. Um, I also like to do STEM outreach um, for uh, women and underprivileged youth, but I like to focus on the very young kids when the ideas of science and scientists is just forming. So really preschool to say second grade. Um, and then I just like keeping up with the fields of, of physics. I love that there's so much unknown. The idea of dark matter and dark energy is just crazy about how much of the universe we don't understand. Um, and then just like anybody, um, you know, it's not just always about your one field of expertise. Um, I have, you know, my life outside of STEM. I have two boys, two sons. One is 13 and the other one is eight. Um, and we are home and they are probably listening to me right now as I make this video. Um, and they're being quiet so far. Um, I uh, like to hang out with friends, go art, hiking. I'm sort of missing, uh, you know, some of the friends and hiking these days while we're social distancing. Um, love all sorts of games um, and just mindless 
TV or whatever might be a nice way to de-stress. So that's me. Um, and you can find uh, contact information for me um, in the My Courses site. But what you'll find um, is that uh, email and the My Courses discussion board um, are the best way to get in contact with me or ask questions outside of what will end up being my common open office hours where you can always just drop right in. All right, so now let's get back to this course and actually just learning um, in general. So fundamentally in this course, I am very focused on the idea of Bloom's taxonomy. So for those that aren't familiar with this, what it is, is it's a way of understanding how we learn. So you start off at the bottom here, and then as time progresses and as you practice your skills, you begin to move up this pyramid. So the very basic time and to start, you just remember things, and then you maybe start to understand them. The goal, the minimum goal for this course in terms of getting you to where you need to be to do well on our quizzes and exams is to get you to the applying level. So what you'll see is that some of our activities and our projects that we're gonna do throughout the semester are going to actually push you higher than that, high, that applying level and get you all the way up to the creating, evaluating and analyzing level so that you can, you know, the higher up you get on the pyramid, then you're at least to the applying level. If you can create um, something new, create your own problem, if you can evaluate a peer's um, work and try to synthesize information, then you're above the applying level and you're beyond where you need to be. And so that's what I'm gonna be here and the materials I provide you with to try to help you get further up this triangle. So throughout the course, I'll be reminding you about Bloom's taxonomy and about the goals that understanding the materials, not enough, that we need to get to the point where you can apply your knowledge to an unfamiliar situation. And that is a lot harder than just understanding it. But keep in mind that like everybody starts down here with a new thing. Everybody starts in the place where you're going to just be remembering everything. Um, so you're not going to, you know, automatically just be given information and then be right at the applying level. Um, so everybody starts at remembering and then you move to understanding and you have to kind of stay there for a while and practice and then you get to applying. Um, so keep in mind that learning does take effort and time, but it doesn't necessarily have to be frustrating. If you ever find yourself spending more than like 15 minutes on one problem and not really making any progress, you need to stop working on that problem and try to seek help from me or your peers um, or some other source because it's not meant to be frustrating. Banging your head against a wall and getting nowhere doesn't do you any good and it'll actually hurt your learning. So just keep that in mind that if you ever get to the point where you're feeling frustrated, you need to stop and then reach out and then let let me help you um, because what can happen is sometimes it's just one or two little pieces that need to be put together in your brain and then you're able to make it all work. So just, um, just remember that, that it's not meant to be frustrating and that I am here um, to help you. Okay, so what I wanna do now is actually talk a little bit about um, our My Courses. So I'm going to stop um, our sharing at this point uh, and See, so I will go ahead and stop the screen sharing and remove us over here and take you back to um, our My Courses site. So My Courses is going to be the main way that we're going to interact um, with, that's, with, with each other um, besides Zoom office hours. So My Courses is going to have our discussion board that we're going to use. That's where you can post questions, you can get to know each other. Um, it's also going to have all of our quizzes and our exams and our assignments, everything. Um, so having regular access and easy access to My Courses um, is gonna be very important. So let's go ahead now, I'm gonna try to share my screen again, and this time I'm going to try 
to share the My Courses page. That seems to have worked, so I am going to move us over. All right, so I'm sorry that there was a small little break in the video just now. I had some technical issues with my screen sharing, but I am back. Um, and so now we're going to go ahead and look at my courses. Um, so my courses is going to be the main way in which we interact um, with each other besides Zoom office hours. So having a good understanding of where to go um, is going to be um, really good and hopefully that's what I'll be able to provide you with. So I'm going to go ahead and try screen sharing again. Um, that seems to have worked that time. Um, oh, nope, it did not. Oh, maybe it did. Did it? Yes, it did. Okay, yay. Um, so, uh, so in this case here, what we are looking at is the home page, our home page for the screen sharing. And a couple things that I'm going to then be able to show. A main thing that you're going to interact with are going to be these weekly guides. So if you're watching this video, you might have already seen the weekly guides or you just got there by looking at this intro video down here. But these weekly guides, that portion, I will update that and we have 12 weeks in this semester. So there by the end will be 12 of these weekly guides. And I've tried to make that a one-stop shop where you can get almost everything that you need for the entire course. Um, the other thing that you're gonna interact with is this discussion session up here. So the discussions then will allow you to go to um, a discussion session and the discussion forum. Um, so I said discussion session, I meant discussion forums um, where we can post questions, I can post answers, we can have discussions um, back and forth that way. Um, and you can see other things along the top, you know, such as syllabus, um, assignments, quizzes, grades, um, and Zoom, that's gonna be where you're going to be able to access my um, office hours or be able to access Zoom to come to my office hours. Um, the other thing here is something called Pivot. Um, now Pivot, is going to be something that we use. And if I go ahead and I open this in a new tab, I'll probably have my own um, site, but this is called Pivot Interactives. And this is gonna be the website through which we're going to buy, um, through which we're going to do all of our labs and some other activities. It's a really, really cool um, site that actually has calibrated video analysis tools. So for some of our labs, you're actually going to be doing them in your own house and then you're going to be uploading your own videos to the site and then using their calibrated tools to analyze your videos. Um, and then some of them, they have the videos and then we'll analyze them that way. Um, it costs $10 for the semester and that is the only cost for the entire semester for anything. We use a free textbook, we don't have any other homework systems, um, and so that's it. Um, in addition to Pivot Interactive, um, like I said, uh, you're only gonna interact with my courses. We have Pivot and we have my courses. Um, the discussion board, you can see if we click on it, there's something called the week one scavenger hunt that's part of this first week here. Um, and so that's gonna be where you go to find that. Um, so this is an example of our weekly guide. So this first week guide, you can see that I'm gonna put out the goals for the week. Um, and then as you scroll down, you can also get what you're going to do. So you're gonna have the to do. Um, and here we have the start of the semester items. Um, so maybe that's how you found this video because you're watching this brief welcome video. Um, and then you're gonna read the syllabus and the course outline. And those are both linked. These are all clickable links. Um, and then you're gonna complete all these items in the first week scavenger hunt. You get a bonus um, extra credit if you do. So um, you're strongly encouraged to do that. Um, and then I am going to have a optional um, Zoom open house um, on Thursday, May, 15th, May 14th um, at 3 p.m. So you can just drop in, um, read through the 
you know, the syllabus and the course outline, ask any questions you might have, share any concerns, or just drop in to say hi and introduce yourself. Um, so that's what will be happening on Thursday. And then we have modules. Each week we're going to do just about two modules, and that's going to be our learning content. And each module will have its own clickable link. You can see you can click on this and we get to module one, which is on units, vectors, and estimates. So this basically walks you through everything you need. Some of the learning will be done via our free online textbook. Um, and these again are all clickable links or some from videos that I've prepared um, on the material. So, um, so the My Courses site um, hopefully is pretty intuitive. If there's anything that I can be doing in order to make that easier for you to navigate, then please um, let me know. All right, so that pretty much ends um, what I wanted to show in this introductory video. And if you have any questions at all um, throughout the semester, whether it's on just the general expectations for the course or on specific things, definitely just reach out um, either through the My Courses discussion session, through email, um, or through my Zoom office hours, which will be posted um, once I know everybody's general favorite times for availability. All right, I look forward to getting to know you all um, and welcome to University Physics.